Everything that exists is made up of the lower levels of existence. Thus, living things are made up of cells, themselves composed of macromolecules. Then come the molecules, atoms and particles. This is the constitutive principle of Ramani. It does not stop there. Particles are inevitably made of what is existing below particles. So that what is existing in the fields emanating from matter shall, in one way or another, enter into the composition of matter. This suggests that gravitational fields consist of small particles, the particles of space, which constitute matter and generate what seems to be an attraction between bodies. Space is filled from the confines of the universe to the inside of the atoms by the particles of space. The first consequence of these assumptions of extreme simplicity is that these particles of space stir in all directions to form a kind of fluid. They are the medium of the space. The second is that they propagate waves as in all fluids. The speed of light is the quadratic mean of the particle of space velocities. The speed of light is not absolute. There is no absolute in the experimental world. Unlike corpuscles, waves in the media can be divided into two wave trains and interfere. We also get interference with electrons, carbon-60 molecules and even with large organic molecules. These elements move at very low speeds compared to the speed of light. As a result, the waves they form moving in the medium of space precede them. These waves interfere and cause a distribution of these elements in the space after the slots. High pressure areas push electrons, atoms or molecules towards low pressures. These areas remain aligned in the direction of the bands that form on the receiving device. There is no need of presence probabilities. The angular momentum of the particles of space has an interesting consequence. Upon impact of two of these particles, momentum is transmitted according to the laws of Descartes. This transmission occurs by elastic deformation of the particles of space. The elastic deformation of the particles of space prevents slippage of the particles on one another as a result of the flattening of the parts in contact. During the oscillations of the electrons, they transmit not only their linear momentum to the particles of space, but also their angular momentum. The angular momentum can only be transmitted transversely. This feature explains the transverse properties of light. Each wave train is polarized in the direction of the angular momentum of electron emitters. Such a polarization is the case of the blue of the sky in the direction opposite the sun and the double polarization of the K layer of the sun observed with this diaphragm instrumented tube. If in viscous fluids, waves propagate and scattering, it does not hold true in a medium consisting of simple shaped particles. The dispersion of waves and fluids derived from the complex shape of the molecules. In air the sound is already much more directional. With a bullhorn sound waves are concentrated. In the medium of the space, the vibration of an electron causes two symmetrical wave trains whose cross-sectional area remain constant over great distances if the particles of the medium are very regular spheres. Under these conditions, they do not drag their neighbors. Such wave trains can therefore have effects similar to a particle. This is the case of the photoelectric effect. The Michelson experiment cannot highlight the motion of the Earth around the Sun. Nevertheless, speeds over 9 km per second were measured. The measures would have been influenced by the temperature. But Professor Ali found a correlation to the respective positions of the Earth, the Sun and the Moon. It is not thus due to the temperature. Of course, it is not the speed of the Earth around the Sun at 30 km per second but it is a uniform motion. It is totally against the relativity theory. It has to be explained one day. A Michelson interferometer, placed in weightlessness in a satellite, could map the velocities of the medium of space flows and thus confirm statistics of Professor Lay. Conversely, in the Sagnik experiment, the disk carrying the mirror rotates relative to the medium of the space and the rotation can be detected. 
This is the principle of laser gyros. They are installed in all planes. No explanation of Sagnick's experiment by general relativity has been found today. However, the special relativity theory is an approximation of general relativity when fields are very low. Special relativity should be able to explain the Sagnick experiment for very low speeds. Gyro losers are able to detect rotation as weak as an hundredth of degree per hour. However, the special relativity theory is used to explain the Michelson experiment. The Earth orbits the Sun at a speed of 1 24th of a degree per hour, and therefore at a speed of rotation four times faster than that detectable by the gyro losers. But Professor Salari demonstrated that the special relativity theory cannot explain the Sagnick experiment. The speed of condensation of the medium of the space is always much lower than the speed of light. There is no black hole. The so-called gravitational waves are waves in the medium of space. Like our waves of space they propagate at the speed of light. The gravitational waves are emitted by the motions of stars at extremely low frequencies ranging from 30 to 300 hertz, along with light waves that exceed 10 to the 14 hertz frequencies. The Orsay experiment, also called Aspects experiment, is therefore unproblematic. The polarization state is of course the same for the two symmetrical wave trains emitted by electrons. There is no need of quantum entanglement. Finally, the deflection of light by the sun is a remarkable fact that Descartes had expected there are almost 400 years.